Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is money in the bank season. At this point, when this is coming out, I think money in the bank is in a couple days from now. So today we are gonna go over every single 2025 money in the bank participants chances of winning in a percentage form. Now to get this out of the way off the bat, this is really based on where the characters are at right now. It's not really thinking like, you know, projections on like, you know, uh, seven months from now, this person could do this so their percentage is higher. It's where everything is right now and what's their percentage and likelihood uh, to win again, I know it's you know they can hold it for a year, and the landscape of storylines and even you know world championship pictures could be totally different. But that's kind of how it makes sense in my brain. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe, leave likes, leave your comments, check out everything in the description, follow me everywhere you get. Check out Stash Club stuff after this video. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. We're starting with the men's Money in the Bank match, and we're starting with Seth Rollins. Originally, I didn't really write these down in order of likelihood, but maybe I'll go like most likely to least likely. But anyway, Seth Rollins, I have down with an 85% chance of winning. I think the most likely. Also wanna say, this is all just percentages and almost just like gambling odds, right? We're like, just cause someone has an 85% chance of winning, granted Seth is my pick, but just because someone has an 85% chance of winning doesn't necessarily you know, mean that I'm expressing like, this person is most likely to win over this person and this person because surprises happen. The person with a 30% chance could win. That's what makes it cool. You know what I mean? I just kinda wanna get the base of where the percentage Percentages are at. But yeah, Seth Rollins, 85% chance. I mean, he is the biggest star by a landslide in this field. He's really the only one kind of besides Soul that has an established story going into it that could immediately benefit and become more interesting with the addition of the briefcase. I mean, Seth just with his faction carrying around the briefcase is kind of an obvious pick. We also know what kind of heel Rollins with the briefcase would look like. It's the easy answer. It's the obvious answer. It's the not risky answer. It's the safe answer answer. That's why the percentage is so high. Also, like I said, not risky also in the sense of we've had conversations of how, you know, Triple H or writing and creating ever kind of booked themselves into a corner with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Rumors are circulating that maybe Triple H doesn't love the briefcase. The briefcase kind of forces you to maybe do things and make choices that you wouldn't normally do in just a, you know, a narrow kind of straight line storyline. So Seth Rollins winning the Money in the Bank briefcase is kind of the non-risky pick. If you're looking to, you know, get someone new with the world title, not in the sense of new that he hasn't had it before, but new in the sense of right now, someone different, a title change. Seth is the not so risky, not so mid card, out of the blue, random uh, pick. Cause he's established, former world champion. We know what he can do with it. You know, does that all make sense? It all makes sense to me. There is also a rumor of maybe Roman Reigns coming in, costing him the, you know, the, the whatever. So that's why it's at, it's at 84. We're not touching 90, it's at 85. But I do think in terms of the landscape kayfabe storyline, he's the most likely to win right now. We'll move on to, uh, I didn't write this in order, like I said. So we're jumping down to who I think is the second most, not most likely, the second highest percent chance. Uh, that being, and I hate to say it, but it's the landscape of where the WWE is right now. I do think <sighs> El Grande Americano, I think has a 75% chance of winning. Uh, <laughs> I just think with the landscape of everything and given track records and how El Grande has been booked, you know, uh, recently, I just think there's a pretty high percent chance that WWE is going to disappoint me and annoy me and let me down with this whole El Grande stuff. Just let Chad Gable <laughs> wrestle for God's sakes. This is really just a, a high percentage of just like, yeah, of course they would do that. I think we talked about on the pod too, there is some likelihood of, you know, them going down the whole rabbit hole of like, well, El Grande has it, but Chad doesn't have it. And now Chad is kind of fighting with his word to Jimmy, any and Audi, if you're a Severance fan. I kind of said on the pod, I just don't see that happening. Not because I don't think that's a great story. I think it is. I just am not confident that WWE would do it. You know? <laughs> All right, we'll move on to Sol Sokoa with a 65% chance of winning. You're also gonna notice, not to spoil things, but you're gonna notice that the men's kind of percentages are a lot more across the board. Once we get to the women's, I think you're gonna notice they're a lot more, you know, closer given to the fact that I think the women's is way more unpredictable than the men's. The men's one is weird and there's some interesting picks and I'd be like, in, you know, curious to see where they'd go with some of these picks, but the women's I think is way more like any of these women could could win and I, I I understand any of them winning, you know? But anyway, back to Solo, 65% chance. The briefcase could be used in Bloodline stuff. You know, he could fight J 
makeup over it. I wouldn't want him to cash in on the U.S. title, but I could even see maybe having a match for the briefcase, and then Jacob gets the briefcase off of Solo, you know? Uh, something I didn't mention with Seth that also, you know, takes in play with Solo Sokoa is they both have their factions. It's why Solo is kind of up there. It's why Seth is, you know, definitely bumped up there. Seth has his faction. Solo has the bloodline. Granted, Solo does have Jacob, so that's, you know, I don't know. I don't know where the Tongas are at. Maybe we're thinking a return. I don't know. So there's a lot of different factors here with both these superstars, but especially Sol Sokoa. I think less likely for a Roman, you know, uh, uh, interference in the sense of it costing Solo necessarily. I think there'll be a little wink, wink, but that puts him in at 65%. All right, next we have LA Knight with a 60% chance. A lot of this, I think, one, it'd be, it'd be a great surprise. And honestly, someone that could win with a big upset or a surprise honestly does bump your chances up. Does that go a little against what I was talking about of all this being kind of in kayfabe? Maybe, who cares? This LA Knight push uh, is long overdue, I think. I'm not saying we're, we missed the train, but I think it should have happened a while ago. This could be WWE kind of getting back on the LA Knight train, kind of doing what they should have done, whatever it was, one or two years ago. And like I said, with the feel-good moment surprise, it honestly makes it more likely because it is the money in the bank, so that bumps up his percent. Uh, so what's that land him at? Four? I think four out of six. All right, next up, it's someone that, listen, listen, listen. It's someone that I would love to see win. And I think their percentage has risen, but uh, I think Penta has a 51% chance of winning. Again, I would love it. I just don't really see Penta right now with it, especially if they want to move into Lucha Bros stuff. And again, this is my, my wants, hopes, and dreams are way different than what I see happening, right? So like, I want uh, Penta with it. I want Penta to get a world title run before the Lucha Bros. I want them to kind of really fully flesh out this uh penta solo run before kind of going in the tag division but i don't know something in me sees this is like it's too early i don't know if they're gonna really you know give it to penta so quick but also he's the hottest guy on the roster right now so why wouldn't they someone also i think left a comment on some video saying like you know wait a minute imagine the walk down to the ring with the briefcase. So he's doing his little strut, right? And the briefcase is like kind of right in front being shown off. That bumped it up. Did I say what his percent was? His percent is a 51%. He's right there at the 50-50, but it's, it's, it's right over here. 51% yes, 49% no. Am I crazy for thinking that? Maybe. I, I don't know. For some reason, God, I love him so much. I just don't know why my likelihood. I, I, I think it, it speaks to the fact of like, do I think WWE is going to do the cool thing? <laughs> you know? A lot of times they don't, but I don't know. That's where I'm at. We'll move on to who I unfortunately, very, very unfortunately think is the least, uh, smallest percentage of winning this is Andrade with a 30%. I love that he's in it. I'm even, I'm even fighting against the people that say like, oh, it should have been others. Like, sure. It'd be great to see. I think we talked about this on the podcast, a Jacob or a Carmelo in it. Uh, uh, but beggars can't be choosers. Andrade in it is going to rock. I think he's going to be so fun in it. I just think he's not that he's just in it to do cool shit. I mean, he is like, that's not a bad thing to say that he is in this match to make this match better, right? I think him not being in this match would make this match have a likelihood of it not being as good compared to him being in it, you know? Just compared to everyone else where he's in, in story, in kayfabe, I just don't see him winning. And kind of, you know, goes against what I was saying with LA Knight of like, yes, would it be a surprise? Would it be an unlikely thing? Absolutely. I just think LA Knight's surprise and, and shocking moment is more likely than Andrade. It would unfortunately feel a little bit out of the blue as much as I would love it. So that's where I'm at. We'll move on to the women's. All right, starting off here with a cool, calm, I think expected 89% chance of winning. A shocker, Rhea Ripley. I'll get this out of the way. I am not at all on the train of, oh, there's too much Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley needs to lose. She's the most over. She's so talented. She's popular for a reason. There's a reason that she's always at the top of the other the mountain. However, a lot of this reasoning is because like yeah it's Rhea Ripley not that she I think is giving the Charlotte treatment where it's like oh Charlotte wins like lol of course Charlotte's in the in the you know world title picture I don't think we're there at this point but like at the end of the day it is Rhea Ripley the biggest star maybe not the most uh I don't, have, I don't really know I mean versus like Alexa and Naomi I guess probably the most established champion going in or former champion I should say very similar to Seth though it's the easy and simple choice it really goes to that whole thing I was saying with Seth where it's like it's not risky if you want you know a title change Rhea Ripley is 
is kind of the obvious and safe pick as compared to maybe someone newer or someone that they're afraid. I don't know. All of this to me in terms of money in the bank, just like I think WWE is scared. WWE these days feels scared to put it on a, I don't know, Andrade, Julia, Stephanie. Like that's kind of where my thought process is. I don't know if I'm right or wrong on that, but it feels like they don't take a lot of risks. Look at the world title. Roman, Cena, Cody. Not one of those three men. Like Roman had it for three or four years. Cody's had it for the whole year. Like that is a title where the elite of the elite stars hold it and no one else touches it. We're like any money in the bank briefcase, mainly talking about the men's, is going to be cashing on the world heavyweight. I really don't see any of those men cashing on the WWE championship. So that kind of speaks to these already established stars, I think, winning it because I do think they're going to they're, they're, they're gonna choose the non-risky whatever option. I don't know. I feel like I've harped on that enough. But anyway, uh, rear play 89%. You get it. Uh, do I, she's not my pick. Do I even like necessarily think her likelihood is, is that great of her winning it? Not necessarily, but again, 89% chance in the sense of like, yeah, it's kind of the obvious pick storyline, whatever you get it. All right, we'll move on. Here's my pick. I think at a 78% chance of winning it is Roxanne Perez. WWE is very, very clearly high on Roxanne, right? Just look at her in the Rumble, being the person that has lasted the longest in the Rumble, breaking that record, coming in at number two, lasting all the way to the end. I think it's so cool. And the biggest uh, implication of, of, of how WWE feels about her and when it feels about her going forward. I've talked about this before where we did have that weird like stop and go where she was like, you know, she had that match against Io Sky which is great on Raw. And then she was going back to NXT, which is like not talking down NXT, but like I'm kind of in the camp of you're called up and you're kind of getting established on the main roster. You kind of graduate from NXT, you know? So this feels like them picking up from where they left off or picking up the slack of where they've kind of fallen off of this, you know, Roxanne Perez push. Did things get muddied up in NXT? Was she wrapping up some storylines? I don't know, but she's officially on the main roster now. She's, you know, has, has tie-ins now with Liv Morgan, who not that she has a world title, but I could even see way down the line, maybe Liv does get a world title. Then you have Roxanne kind of still creeping around with the briefcase. You have Roxanne getting closer to Finn Balor. There's a lot of storyline stuff that would make it even more interesting with Roxanne carrying around the briefcase, maybe rubbing it in Judgment Day people's faces. I don't know. But that's where we're at with Roxy. Uh, next up, who do I have next? I have Stephanie Vacare at a 75%. Listen, she is the new it girl. There's plenty of current it girls. Not like there's always one it girl, but she is the new it it girl the fans immediately connect with her she is she is a star with the fans being really behind her this is a perfect opportunity to capitalize on her budding stardom you know her rise has been very organic she's again super talented in the ring so it's just a perfect opportunity to to give this not to repeat myself but to give the money in the bank briefcase to a real up-and-coming star what i think the money in the bank briefcase should be used for and it just like she's already being skyrocketed to like stardom in the s tier in terms of like you know the main event class, but this would kind of help push that agenda and do it in a, in a very cool way. And as maybe the, you know, crowd is kind of getting more used to the mainstream crowd is getting more used to a Stephanie and Julia, or whatever. This is a perfect moment to put eyes on someone still maybe establishing them, themselves more and more each week. All right. Next up at a 72%, someone who I think is more than deserving of it is Naomi. First of all, uh, some of the best, if not the best character work of her career and the branding is on point. So think of it, it writes itself, the money that briefcase with all the caution tape around it and maybe some razor blades and shit it's perfect the money in the bank briefcase does really lend itself better to a heel and right now she's in that perfect uh heel character she is in current and ever so developing storylines with jade that will bleed into bianca stuff and again think of it if maybe bianca or jade gets the world title or gets a world title opportunity there's always naomi lurking in the background with that briefcase once one of those women either gets the opportunity or even gets the title you know to kind of cash in it's very deserved I mean, it's been a minute since we've had Naomi with the world title. So I think we are very due, again, especially the work she's put in as of late. I think she's very deserving of this opportunity. Uh, and yeah, it'd be a home run. It really would. All right, I believe second to last here. But again, we are only at a 65%. Again, look at like, I was in the 70s. Now I'm still in the 60s. The women are all pretty grouped together with Rhea maybe being over here a little bit just based on percentages. But this is so, there's no wrong pick. In the women's one, there really is no wrong pick. But anyway, 65% goes to Alexa Bliss. She's coming off a huge return. The fans are really behind her. I think this is a great opportunity to, I don't want to use the term reestablish because I don't think she's like not established, but just a little friendly reminder of like, hey, Alexa, 
still a top dog, still in that world championship class and is ready to get that world title again. She is kind of in a feud with Charlotte they're developing that like, you know, isn't really involved in the world title. I mean, it is Charlotte. So like at the drop of a dime, it could be again, someone who's had it before. So like maybe it does go against her chance because she did get it before and, you know, seeing someone new with it would be great. But also we know what she can do with it and it's already a well-established star. So while it's the craziest pick, I do think it does lean a little safe, but safe that doesn't really lend to a higher chance that doesn't really make sense but it makes sense in my brain all right moving on very very unfortunately i think julia has a 61 percent chance of winning it i think we're still kind of establishing and figuring out julia's place People are saying, and I do agree with it, that she should be involved in the U.S. title picture. It would give that a lot of life and kind of take the burden off just solely Chelsea and Zelina. And also seeing those matches would be great. Because I think you need to start treating these women's mid-card titles like the men's mid-card titles and use it as like, this is the title you get first, you run with it, and then you graduate to the world title. So I don't think it's a bad thing at all to have a new to the main roster Julia, regardless of how established and how much of a star she is, get her the mid-card title have an impressive run with that. Fans can kind of see like, oh shit, she's the real deal. Then you kind of graduate to the world title. A little old school thinking, sure, but like, I think that's cool when you do it that way. She was also involved in that backstage uh, moment when she got signed with Alexa and Charlotte. So maybe could we be going in the direction of a Charlotte and Julia? I feel like they're kind of like looking at that a little bit, not as much as Alexa. And again, Charlotte doesn't really have the title right now, but again, drop of a hat. So I think the US title picture might just be a little smarter of a move for Julia. However, I love that she's in this match. I think she's going to add so, 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 so much this match. I just think, un unfortunately, her chances of winning. But again, I want to remind everyone, just because their chances are low doesn't mean the likelihood of their winning is really a fact or whatever. Because again, it's money in the bank. It surprises the person you least likely or has the least likely chance to win could win. And that really just gives the fact of what we like, you know, the money in the bank uh, briefcase being is elevating these kind of stars that need a little more establishing and need that kind of big pop and surprise, you know? Those are my thoughts. Those are my, you know, given percentages on who I think has the best and worst chance of winning money in the bank this year let me know your thoughts what do you agree with what do you disagree with who should be higher who should be lower i'd love to hear from you in the comments please again make sure you subscribe leave your likes on the bell for notifications i post pretty randomly on here check out stash club after this video i'd really appreciate it our predictions are over there and we have a live stream this saturday me and jimmy on the couch for money in the bank all right enough of that uh having money in the bank season i'll see you next time goodbye bye 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 bye